Hey guys, my name is Sam Ross, and I'm the Assistant Chief Flight Instructor here at Virtual Horizon Flight Center. Today we will be talking about the ground school for Lesson 3, Climbs and Descents. Aviation has its basic components. So far, we've practiced two of the four most important fundamentals of flight, straight and level flight, and turns. Now it's time to practice the final two, Climbs and Descents. One of aviation's biggest misconceptions is that airplanes climb because of excess lift. This is similar to believing that putting hand lotion in your airplane's fuel tank will make your landing smoother and softer. Airplanes climb because of excess thrust, not excess lift. Let's return to the example of a car on the road to learn a little bit more about why this is. A car traveling uphill is similar to an airplane in a climb. The only difference is that you, the pilot, choose the slope of the hill you climb. This is done by using the elevator control that we discussed earlier. On a level stretch of road, the maximum forward speed of the car with full power is 60 miles per hour. I'm sorry, 65 miles per hour, as shown by car A in this picture. This picture shows power and climb angle. Even with full power, the car starts to slow down as the hill steepens. As we move up the hill, car B, the drop speed drops to 50 miles per hour. An even steeper hill slows the car down to 40 miles per hour, as shown in car C. The limited horsepower of the car's engine simply can't match the drag caused by wind resistance plus the rearward acting weight as the hill steepens, so the car slows. A bigger, in a bigger engine or a redesign of the car to produce less wind resistance are the only options that could help this tired out old machine climb the hill faster. The same analyst analysis works up to a point for an airplane attempting to climb a hill in the air. Let's say our airplane has a maximum speed of 120 miles per hour in straight and level flight with full throttle as shown by airplane A in this picture. This picture shows power, climb, angle, and airspeed. Even with full throttle, maximum power, the airplane slows down as it attempts to ascend a steeper hill. Pilots adjust their climb angle, their hill size, by selecting an altitude that gives them a specific climb airspeed. Think of airplane throttles as being similar to automobile accelerator pedals, except that an airplane, airplane throttle is hand-operated. You push in for more power and pull out for less. Applying slight back pressure on the elevator control points the airplane's nose upward, as shown by airplane B. This causes the airplane to climb a shallow hill, and the speed decreases too, let's, to, let's say, 80 miles per hour, just as it did in the car. Attempting to climb a steeper hill, as shown in, by airplane C, slows our speed down to 70 miles per hour. We can't climb the hill we just selected faster than 70 miles per hour because we don't have the extra horsepower or thrust to do so. As we continue to steepen the angle of climb, our airspeed decreases further, just like the car's speed did. Here, however, is where the airplane goes its own way from the car analogy. Airplanes need to maintain a minimum forward speed for their wings to produce the lift required to stay airborne. Ever wonder why airplanes need runways? Airplanes must attain a certain speed before they can take flight. This minimum forward speed is called the stall speed of an airplane. It's an important speed that changes with variations in weight, flap settings, power settings, and angle of bank. It also varies among airplanes. There's no need to worry because I'll, later I'll show you how to recognize when you're near a stall. As long as the airplane stays above its stall speed, enough lift is produced to counter the airplane's weight, and the airplane will fly. If the stall speed of an airplane C is 60 miles per hour, then climbing at a slightly steeper angle will result in insufficient lift for flight. We call this condition a stall. Done unintentionally, it leads to such primitive linguistic sounds as uh-oh. Needless to say, in a real airplane, these sounds, may, these sounds make passengers reluctant to ever fly with you again. This is why an upcom in an upcoming lesson, we will spend finding out how about stalls and doing them. Inattentionally, that is. What you need to know about stalls is that airplanes with a lot of power can climb at steep angles. Those with limited power, however, must climb at less steep angles. Knowing it's extra thrust and not extra lift from the wings that is responsible for the climb allows you to draw some interesting conclusions. For instance, anything that causes the engine to produce less power prevents you from archiving your maximum rate of climb. Among the things resulting in less power production are high altitudes and high temperatures. Not applying full power for a climb is also another condition that gives you less power. At this point, you should be asking an important question. A good question for you to ask is, how can I de determine the proper size hill for my airplane to climb? Let's find out. Airplanes have a specific climb attitude or steepness of hill that offers the best of all worlds optimum climb performance while keeping that the airspeed safely above its stall speed. 
You can determine the proper climb attitude for your airplane by referring to its airspeed indicator. With climb power applied, usually full throttle in smaller airplanes, the pitch attitude is adjusted until the airspeed indicates the proper climb speed. In the Cessna, 17, in the Cessna Skyhawk SP Model 172 that we use in our lessons, we'll use a speed of 75 knots for all our climbs. Sometimes, however, pilots climb at airspeed slightly faster than 75 knots. No, they don't do this because they want to get somewhere faster. They do it because it provides them with better over-the-nose visibility. Raising the nose of the airplane results in a slower airspeed. Lowering it picks up the pace. Where you place the nose, that is, the attitude you select, or how steep you make it, the hill, determines what happens on the airspeed indicator. Unlike the ground-bound world, pilots decide how steep the hills in the air are going to be, within limits, of course. With just a little experience, you'll be able to determine the correct size hill, nose up attitude, by looking out the front window instead of having to rely solely on your airspeed indicator. Descents While engine power moves the car uphill, gravity pulls it down. Without your foot on the accelerator, the car's downward speed is determined by the steepness of the hill it's descending. The steeper the hill, the faster it goes. If the hill becomes shallower, then the speed decreases. If the hill becomes too shallow, then some power is necessary to maintain sufficient forward speed. Airplanes can also move downhill without power, as shown in this picture. This picture shows an airplane in descent. Just lower the nose, and you'll get what appears to be a free ride. You can adjust the nose down pitch and attitude using the elevator control and descend at any reasonable airspeed you want. You now have the answer to a question I guarantee every first-time passenger will either ask or want to ask you. What happens if the engine quits? The airplane becomes a glider, not a rock. Unlike climbing, you may elect to descend within a wide range of airspeeds. There are, however, however, many factors to be considered, such as forward visibility, engine cooling, and the structural effects of turbulence on the airframe. However, during the last portion of the landing approach, known as final approach, you should maintain, must maintain a specific airspeed. Usually, this airspeed is at least 30% above the airplane's stall speed. When preparing to touch down, excess airspeed or erratic control forces often lead to difficulty in making a smooth landing. Beginning a climb. Flying is no fun as if it's all talk and no action. So let's take a look at the actions involved in entering a climb. Let's assume that your airplane is in straight and level flight at cruise power with an airspeed of 100 knots. Entering the climb requires that you raise the nose to climb attitude and simultaneously add climb power. After all, it makes sense to get the airplane up in the air as fast as it is reasonable to take advantage of favorable winds and the better view. So in the Cessna 172, you always add full power to climb. Then you'll apply enough nose-up trim to hold the airplane in this attitude. As soon as you begin raising the nose, you'll notice that the assigned airspeed drops and the vertical speed indicator begins to slow a climb. This is one sure sign that you're climbing. When the people on the ground start to look at ants, there's another clue. This picture shows the airplane climbing at 85 knots and 500 feet per minute. You're on your way up. Engineers tell us that our Cessna 172 climbs most efficiently at 74 knots. Since the airplane in figure 3-4 is at 85 knots, how do you get the airplane slowed down to 74 knots while continuing to climb at full power? The answer is to raise the airplane's nose, increase the steepness of the hill you're climbing to a slightly higher climb attitude. Hold it there and watch the response on the airspeed indicator. Adjust the pitch up and down slightly until the airspeed indicator shows 74 knots. 75 is okay too. Be patient. Airplanes have inertia and take a moment or two to settle into a new speed once the pitch is changed. To maintain a 75 knot climb speed, you should show a pitch of approximately 13 degrees on the attitude indicator as shown in this picture. For now, we'll use the attitude indicator for our pitch and bank reference, since it's difficult to see the real horizon over the instrument panel in a flight simulator. The attitude indicator's vertical collaboration lines are worth 5 degrees each, so you read them from, top to, from bottom to top as 5, 10, 15, and 20 degrees of pitch. 13 degrees of pitch would be just below the third line up. Of course, the pitch for a climb may vary slightly. At that matters, all that matters, however, is that you find the proper pitch that gives you the climb airspeed you want. Now you know that secret to climb. Now you know the secret to climbing an airplane. Therefore, the next time you want to climb, follow this procedure: raise the nose to approximately 13 degrees pitch up on the attitude indicator, add full throttle, and trim the airplane to maintain this attitude. It's as simple as that. Then adjust the pitch slightly, 
perhaps only a degree or two, to give you the airspeed you want. Think of entering a climb as a three-step waltz. Think one, two, three, one, two, three, or attitude, pit, power, trim. Change the attitude, change the power, then the trim. The airplane wants it stabilized at its new altitude. Of course, you may elect to climb at a slightly faster speed. This often makes it easier to look over the instrument panel, so you can see and avoid other airplanes. With When a rapid, efficient climb to altitude isn't necessary, find the airspeed that gives you a, both a good climb rate and a reasonable view over the panel. What goes up must come down. If you keep climbing, you will eventually climb out of the atmosphere, right? Not really, but you still need to know how to get down. Think of descending in an airplane as you would going down a hill in a car. First, as the car points down a steep hill, you normally take your foot off the accelerator and coast downward. The steepness of the hill determines the car's eventual speed. Steep hills result in faster coasting speeds, while shallow hills result in slower coasting speeds. Airplanes work similarly. This picture shows an airplane with the power reduced to flight idle. In a sense, this airplane is coasting down a hill. The airspeed is stabilized at 80 knots in this figure. Now let's change the steepness of that hill. Pitch change means airspeed change. Let's see how a small change in pitch affects the airspeed. Without readjusting the trim, if you lower the nose slightly, make a steeper hill, you'll find an attitude that produces an airspeed reading of 90 knots. Do this by referring to the attitude indicator. By making a slight pitch adjustment, perhaps one half of a degree, one degree, or even two degrees and holding it, you'll notice the airspeed increase. Eventually, the airspeed will indicate 90 knots, and the attitude indicator will show a pitch similar to the show to that shown in this picture. If you want to descend at this speed, trim the airplane to maintain this attitude. If you were to raise the nose or make a shallower hill, shallower hill, you would find an attitude that produces an airspeed reading of 70 knots. This picture shows the attitude needed to produce this airspeed. This is how you should control the airspeed during a descent. Raise or lower the pitch attitude using vertical collaboration on the attitude indicator. Make a small change and watch the result. Remember to be patient as the airplane slowly changes its speed. Controlling your airspeed by adjusting your pitch this way is important, especially as you prepare for a landing. After all, you'll need to fly at different speeds while making your landing approach. By making changes in pitch, you can descend at any airspeed you want. Just remember to use the trim to maintain the airplane at the desired altitude, and thus, the desired airspeed. Changing descent rates. What if you want to descend at the same airspeed but a slower descent rate, a smaller reading on the VSI? Well, here's your chance for power. Power has a direct bearing on your rate of descent. At 80 knots with the power at flight idle, the airplane descends at approximately 700 feet per minute, as shown in this picture. Suppose, for example, you're approaching to, you're approaching to land and need less of a descent rate to make it to the runway. What do you do? Increase your power to a higher value, say 1,800 revolutions per minute, or RPMs, and adjust the pitch slightly to maintain 80 knots. Reach them if necessary. Your instruments should look like these in this picture. With this slight increase in power, the airplane descends at 300 feet per minute. Of course, as more power is added, the airplane will stop descending. If you give it even more power, the airplane will fly level or start climbing at 80 knots.